64-year-old Jody Bokerman vanished from right here in Rochester, Minnesota on October 15th of 2021. We are standing right now in front of Technology Park Apartments where she resided. Jody was driving a 2004 Silver Pontiac Grand Am, license plate Charlie November Victor 037. The intelligence unit here, Rochester PD, were able to tell that she went to Smoke's Barbecue right down the street where she purchased her meal. She had a few drinks and she also bought a meal to go, which she does this same thing once a month, every month. You know, Smoke's Barbecue is less than a half a mile away. We know she had a kitten at home she's taken care of. She bought a meal to take home. So we have to theorize that her intentions were to go home. Uh, our first point of interest is gonna be this pond here. We know that there were tire tracks seen going into this pond. The second area of interest here is gonna be the pond behind Scott Road Northwest. This is a little bit of a deeper pond right behind Costco. We zoom out a little bit more and we got four, five. So we have five ponds right here within a mile of her home. It does get down to almost six feet deep. You can see her apartments from here. It was logical this could have been it. And now we're going. It's the second location, third location, fourth location. Keep knocking them out. This one's no more than four feet at its deepest, uh, but we gotta rule them out. We can't assume, we can't guess. We gotta, it's just process of elimination. One step closer. Come on, there's gotta be a vehicle in here. It's been a month since anyone said that they've seen or heard from 64-year-old Jody Beckerman. I'm, I'm confident that there's not a vehicle in here. It's extremely unlikely. If a Grand Am makes it in here, half of it's gonna be exposed. If the car went into here based on the pitch of this, yeah. there's no way it can make it past about right there, I would say. Okay. I don't see it being possible to make it even into the water without stopping. Yeah, you can see if a vehicle came into here, there's no way it would make it to the lake. Police say there's added concern because she has medical issues that require medication. Six feet deep out there. Hmm. Big hump out there. Right where a car could be. Did you just find a car using a sonar? Possible. Authorities are asking anyone who may have seen her or know where she is to contact Rochester police. What's that right there? Is that a car? 36 feet that way. There it is, right there. That's a car. That is a car. It looked just like a Pontiac. I think we just found Jody.
Pontiac. There it is. There it is. That looks like Pontiac. Got it. Got it. It looks like a Pontiac. I mean, this could be any car, but no, it doesn't make sense for just another car to be here, you know? Brand new chain on this gate right here. And then we're noticing this old cable that if you look at it on this side, it's broken. That must have went across. The padlock is still locked. So you come in here, boom, hits that. Look at this chain. This chain is not a year old. And and this looks like maybe it maybe it hasn't been painted that long either. No. I see fresh drip marks. So I mean, it, it was painted over. Hello. Hey, good afternoon, Sarge. Yes, sir. How are you? I'm doing I'm doing okay. Um so we you know we've been out hitting it hard all day. I've uh, been searching really tough everywhere. I just sent you a pin drop. Did you get that? I did, yes. Yeah. So I, I just discovered a vehicle right off the edge of this uh, private boat ramp. Uh, we're suiting up right now to dive. It is a vehicle on sonar that does resemble the vehicle that she went missing in. Um, I can't confirm that at the moment, but I will be able to in about 30, 45 minutes. So I just wanted to at least give you a heads up that we did discover a vehicle and we're about to dive on it. Authorities are asking for the public's help tonight in finding a missing Rochester woman. Let's get this knocked out. Where you make your way out safely. Once you get there, take your time, make identification. Once you make identification, do your assessment completely around the vehicles, all window conditions, tire conditions, orientation of the vehicle, and go from there. 2004 Pontiac Grand Am, silver in color, license plate CNV037. Good luck, be safe, let's bring her home. Diver's been underwater for five minutes and 24 seconds. Time is 17.10. Diver's been underwater for six minutes and three seconds. Ten four, you're doing a great job. See if you can find a emblem on the rear of the vehicle. The vehicle identification is key in case we have a foul play scenario where the license plates have been switched. Thank you. 
Diver's been underwater seven minutes and 52 seconds. Time is 17.12. All the windows are up on this vehicle. The gate was broke. Did we just find somebody else? Copy that. Coming up topside. Diver surfaced. 1714. Underwater 9 minutes and 42 seconds. Let's see that plate. Minnesota plate 413 LAE, Lima Alpha Echo. Take it up. Here's, here's PD. You can tell that, that the vehicle just plowed through this. The chain keeping it is new. This other one here has been broken with force. You can tell a lot of tension has been put on this. By the way, this is, when it broke, it was frayed. Like it, it takes a lot of tension to fray that like that and to snap it like this. With, with this, typically with our experience, it's, it's really good like to get it out so you know there's nobody in the trunk, there's nobody inside. Um, if it is just come back as a stolen vehicle, you know, somebody that steals a vehicle might have the gall to kill somebody as well. So what we're gonna do right now is fire department's on their way. They're gonna be here just to set up for safety in case we need help. Once they get here, we're gonna send you back in the, in the water. We'll have you rig the car. We'll run a line to the boat ramp. Tow trucks will be here shortly and we'll pull it out. Timer's on now. Get both those wheels rigged up and then we'll marry the red through it to our line up here. Ready for the red strap. it in slowly. Should be breaking the surface here shortly.
steering. Lock. It's locked. It's in neutral, so it's just a dump. Day one is a wrap for our search for 64-year-old Jody Bokerman. We did find a vehicle, it's stolen, we've been able to clear it, but huge effort from Rochester PD, Rochester Fire Department, we all came together, they utilized our resources for diving, rigging the vehicle, we got the vehicle out safely, efficiently, huge win for the marine environment here, and you guys get to close, I guess, a robbery case? Yeah. So we're not done with this case, we have a lot more work yet to go, Stay tuned for episode two for our search for Jody Bokerman. Day two in our search efforts for Jody Lee Bokerman begins right now. Yesterday we searched about six or seven ponds, the ones that were within about a mile of Jody's residence and the place she last ate, which was Smoke's Barbecue. We didn't find anything there, but we searched them real good and we're basically sure that there's no way a vehicle could make it in there without being spotted. We then took our search to a few different lakes, one being Cascade Lake where we didn't find anything, and then we finished up at Manorwood Lake where we did end up finding a vehicle. However, it wasn't the vehicle we were looking for. Outside of that, there's a lot that Nick did not just mention. So I wanna caution each and every one of you who are watching this, stop, go back and watch episode one. There's a whole lot that transpired, the way it went down, the way the investigation unfolded, which brings us right here to where we're at right now. Now we're at Silver Lake. This is pretty much right on the outskirts of downtown Rochester. This is basically the last known place that we can find on our search map that has a boat ramp and it's basically a probability that there could be a chance that a vehicle could drive in off this boat ramp across the lake right here and make it into the water. Another more significant tie to Silver Lake we have as well is she used to live here. One of her addresses is not far here from Silver Lake where we're at. So now we have an emotional significance uh, drawing us to this location. It's also one of, the, one of the biggest bodies of water that flows through Rochester. Um, anytime we have a big body of water like that, it sticks out to us. However, you know, where she disappeared, where her apartment was, where Smoke's Barbecue was, was on the northwest side of town. So in order for us to accurately use the tactics that we've developed at Adventures of Purpose, we have to exhaust those before we can branch out. And that's why on day two, we're here at Silver Lake. We're really optimistic about this location. We have a lot of water here to check. Some of our investigations uncover a lot of clues as we work them. This case, however, has not. You know, I've, I've, I've been in communications with the intelligence sergeant that is in charge of this case, and he agrees as well. Like, there's nothing to go off of. Jody simply fell off the face of the earth, her and her 2004 Pontiac Grand Am, without a trace. Nothing whatsoever, no financial transactions, no sightings, no license plate readings. She did not leave the immediate area where she was at. She didn't have any weird communication with anybody that was suspicious. The one thing we're working with here is we know she left her kitten at home. It was the kitten that alarmed the apartment complex workers. Supposedly, this is what I've heard, something was wrong. People heard the kitten going crazy in the, in the apartment. After a week and a half, they found this kitten, they got into the apartment, the kitten was alive without a food for a week and a half. Little teeny tiny kitten. We also know that she, she purchased a meal to take home with her. Now, that shows intent of going home. Uh, some would say that's 
throws out there something horrible happened to her. Somebody did something to Jody, took her and her vehicle. Who knows? But if you erase that, there's another aspect of this case that we're working with, which is her child succumbed to mental health issues, self-harm. A few years later, her husband succumbed the same way. Now, a, this, her husband died a year before she went missing, almost to the day. So when she disappears, she's working with the anniversary of her husband's death. She's got a lot of traumatic, emotional and mental issues by losing her child the same way. Are we working with that as far as Jody is concerned? Was Jody struggling with the same issues? But we're running out of options. This is the land of many lakes, 10,000 lakes. This lake we're at here is the most prominent location left on our search. I'm really optimistic about getting into it. But the bottom line is, since we've been in town, no one knows who Jody is. No one. She's been missing for 10 months, her and her vehicle. And the least that we can do is be a voice for her. Right. And I'm getting kind of angry here because we have a woman that's been missing and everybody we meet does not know her here. Now, everyone is gonna know her. So, you know, if, if our efforts at the end of the day are unsuccessful, as far as finding her, our efforts are not unsuccessful because we're being a voice for someone who obviously definitely does not have a voice here. No one in the community knows about Jody. I think the most important thing that we need to do right now is keep putting one foot in front of the other. So Nick, let's get over there. Let's put our boats in the water. Let's get up, put the sonar in and let's get the searching. How deep did you say it was? Two. So is it worth putting in the other boat? I, I, I would say no. If you find something, let me know. I'll keep it here on standby. Okay. I mean, from, from, from there to there, it's a foot and a half, two feet at the deepest. Yeah, I got a radio. If you see it getting deeper, let me know. We've developed a saying here at Adventures With Purpose. You never judge a water by its appearance. You just never know. It's just part about being out here, you know, we win some, we lose some. Uh, some of the areas are gonna be very rich as far as uh, fruitful and producing what we're looking for, uh, the types of things that we're looking for, and some areas just aren't. The bottom line is you gotta get out here, you gotta do it, and we're doing it. You know, all, all, all we can do is our best with what we've developed here with our search tactics, our habits that we deem help us solve cases. You know, those habits we form, those tactics that, you know, we've, we've, we've learned a lot from all the cases that we work. Each and every case, it just makes us stronger in our knowledge and wisdom that we're working. And not only that, each and every case that we work with we're, we're being a voice for somebody who doesn't have a voice. I say this a lot, but it's, it's, it's the truth. And this is really the impact we're making in the world is being a voice for the voiceless and fighting for those who cannot fight for themselves. And publicity and missing persons cases. <sighs> missing persons in a general is a nation's silent mass disaster. No one talks about. On average, 600,000 people go missing every year. Yes, a, a good percentage of those do turn back up, uh, which, which is a, one of the reasons why law enforcement, they, they just can't throw out all of their resources at once because, just because someone goes missing. They need evidence of foul play or um, some type, something. If it's just a standard missing person, you're, you're, unfortunately the injustice is you and your family, or your, your loved one, your friend is not gonna get the type of resource um, applied to the case that's gonna help find them, you know? And, and what happens is, at first, where there's no evidence, you get no resources, evidence disappears. You know, by the time a detective does get applied to a case, the evidence is gone. Time is, is, is something that's really critical in all of these cases. And unfortunately, just so many people go missing. So many people go missing. At, at least I can do my part. We can do our part. You guys are putting us in the position to do our part. And that's, that, that's what this is all about, you know. Regardless of one search turning out not good or one search turning out amazing, we're learning. We're gathering wisdom and we're growing.
as a whole, we together, you, us, because you guys put us in a position to do this. An another thing is our schedule. You know, we, we have a very tight schedule here at Adventures With Purpose when we're on the road. Um, you know, so our, our time is limited when we're in these cities, uh, w which is understandable. You know, we have a lot of cases. We have to work them. Uh, we have to continue to work them. And also being a voice for them, we have to just put the episodes out and gather information. We've solved cases simply because we didn't solve it at first and put it in your hands to get your feedback, to get the tips, the information, the clues so that we can come back and solve them. And at, at the moment, I think that this is really where this is coming to with this particular case. You know, this where we're at right now, Silver Lake is one of the last places of significance um, that we needed to check. And I, I'm okay with that. I have to be okay with that. I have to be okay with working these cases and coming up empty handed and coming up empty handed quite frequently. But what we're doing is powerful. Being a voice for the voiceless, you know putting their story out there for millions of people to hear it. Maybe Jody's still out there. Um, or maybe something happened to Jody. Maybe somebody did something to Jody and someone knows something and then we're gonna come forward, we're gonna get information or somebody's gonna say they saw her in a specific area and it's gonna draw us into a more accurate region to search. She very well could still be out there. Is Jody out there? We don't know. Water temp, super cold two feet deep the whole way this I would call it more of a canal than a river but um, Doug's searching just a little bit below but basically he's cleared this whole area it ain't even deep enough to hold a car so we're probably gonna be packing up the boats here pretty soon and moving on this entire thing is so so shallow Hold on. I think... I think I just saw somebody that's not subscribed. If you're watching this and you're not subscribed, make sure you please take the moment to subscribe. It's free. It helps us out here on the road as we're able to help families and law enforcement all across the country. We wouldn't be able to do it without everybody watching. So please take a moment, subscribe. Hit the bell notification as well so you can get up to date notices when new content comes out. Flip side of that, we also offer memberships for early releases of videos. And that's just a way of whether it's $4.99, $9.99 or more per month that you choose to be a member, your membership level. It contributes directly, whether it's putting fuel in the RV for us to drive all the way around the country, you know, five times a year or the gear replacement, the sonar upgrades, you know, you name it, the list goes on and on and on on what it takes for the wheels of this to keep turning. So please, if you have it, consider becoming a member. It helps us do this. If not, don't worry, just some, something as simply as watching what we're doing, being a subscriber, liking and sharing leave a comment let us know what you think about these episodes that we're putting out it helps us again all that information we need all your help as well we are only but one or two brains out here trying to almost what some would say do the impossible so don't don't hold back leave comments let us know how you feel about these cases we're working and it helps build the algorithm as well it builds views and other people so that they can find us as well so please hit the subscribe button if you have not done so already. If you know anything that we have not yet discussed, if you know a body of water in the area, Rochester, Minnesota area, that we have not searched, please reach out to us or local law enforcement. And with that, ladies and gentlemen, we have to hit the road. We have another case waiting on us. We have to be there bright and early in the morning. We have a long drive ahead of us yet today, as well as some other things that we have to do as far as uh, crossing our T's, dotting our I's with our equipment, making sure everything is in order uh, and in ready mode for that case. So we'll see you on the next one. Thank you.